Okay guys, with the new year, I don't know if anyone else had this thought, but I was thinking back on all of the books that I had read, and as I was going through book talk and my bookstagram and watching booktube videos, I was thinking about the most hyped up books of 2022, so I started doing a little bit of research. We started looking at book talks, asking you guys what you guys thought were the most popular books of 2022, and that is when I decided, in today's video idea was birthed straight from my mind, that we were going to read the most hyped up books of 2022. I'm reading the most hyped up books. I basically picked all of the most hyped up books from 2022 because I asked you guys over on my bookstagram, if you guys aren't following my bookstagram, go follow it. I asked you guys, hey, what are the most hyped up books? Like, what are the most hyped up books that you personally think that you're seeing right now? And I took in a lot of those answers. I scoured book talk, book to bookstagram. And then I also went on Goodreads and looked at what their goods read choice were because basically all of those align. So that's what we're doing today. I picked seven books to read and see what my taste aligned with and if I thought that these books deserved the hype or not. Come along, we're going to read the most hyped up books of 2022. Let's do it. Jump scare, I know. I look terrible right now because I am having girly time. So deal with it, I literally don't care. Anyway, the first book that we are reading for today's video is going to be tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. This is one of my most anticipated books of 2023. I'm very excited to read it. I've actually, I'm already 11 pages in. I am enjoying the first 11 pages so far. We're going to sit down. We're going to read this today from front to back. How many pages is it? It's like around 300. 70 80 ish pages going into this i know like the plot synopsis said this is about video games and about two people who have this history with each other and they kind of like come back and they make this whole entire like video game empire is kind of what i'm under the impression of this was the goodreads choice winner for the best fiction book of 2022 i believe and also i just see this book all the time everywhere so that's why we're reading this book first plus it is one of my more anticipated reads of 2023 and so i'm excited to get into this i love the cover of this book so much. Listen, this book has been harder to get than you think. I have went to Barnes & Noble no short of five different times and finally found this book and got it on a restock day, so I'm so excited. I've heard amazing things about it, and from the first 11 pages, I'm really liking it. Let's read tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Okay, guys, a little update time. I just finished part one because this book is actually separated into... 10 different parts so i just finished part one and i'm on page 61 and i have to say that i am really enjoying this book so far the first part of this book is called sick kids and it's basically like the kind of background introduction i feel to the importance of these characters and who they are a little bit i feel like we don't do a deep deep dive like i would really expect i feel like we learn more about the girl character than we do the guy character but then again i'm like maybe there's not that much I don't know. I feel like we are going to learn more about their characters, but I am going to say I am heavily, heavily enjoying this book so far. It is giving me the feeling that I got the first time that I read A Little Life, even though these two books are not the same in the slightest. Okay, A Little Life is like heavily, heavily traumatizing. This book, I'm having an amazing time reading it. I think there are super sweet parts. There's funny parts. I love the writing in this book. I think it's so good and I'm really looking forward to it. I am somebody who like, I didn't absolutely adore video games growing up, but I love the nostalgic feeling of all of the old video games that I know about. Donkey Kong, Mario, all of those like, you know, kind of like 80s games, Tetris, all of that stuff that they talk about in this book. I think it's so interesting to sit here and see kind of like how they also make these into, it is a, I'm kind of stupid, hold on. I think that the writing in this book is just absolutely genius. I'm having an amazing time with it so far. I'm liking the characters. I'm liking the layers, the growth, and I can't wait to continue on with it. And I have been tabbing and annotating this book. And of course, we're using a book of the month bookmark, but I thought that I should update you guys that I did just finish the first part. And now we are on to the second part, which is, I'm pretty sure that in influences. We're on influences. Oh, 
Okay guys, another little update. Okay, you can see my feet. Another update time. I have now reached part three, unfair games. So all of what Influences was about, which is the second part of the book, is basically about them creating their first video game. I think that they create multiple together. My thoughts as I keep going through the book, something about the formatting of this book I both like, but is a little bit confusing for my brain. I'm kind of conflicted on how I exactly feel about it because they basically, you were kind of switching in and out of point of views, like a crossroad. You'll be in one person's point of view and they're talking about the other person and then boom, switches to their point of view, switches back to this point of view. Like sometimes it's kind of a little hard to follow because it's not even like the paragraph changes, the point of view just changes and you kind of have to like pick up on that. And also they do some foreshadowing, I guess we'll call it, where you'll be like learning about an event and then they'll all of a sudden like put in an article about this event that you read that has already happened or like little clues as to what's going to happen in the future. I both like and dislike that at the same time. I'm very conflicted on that, the writing style. I both like and dislike in ways, but I am still enjoying this book thus far. I will say a little bit there at the end, it kind of felt a little dragged on for that part where I was like, okay, I'm ready to like get this over with. But part three, unfair games. I am making my way through this book slowly, but surely nonetheless, I am now on part four, both sides. We're in both sides and we're kind of reaching a conflict in the story. Miscommunication. At its best, ladies and gentlemen, I honestly didn't have much to say about that chapter. I do feel like we did finally get more background on the main guy. Again though, we're switching through POVs and I don't know how to feel about that. So we meet again. Hello everybody. Last night I finished tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and wow. I have had to sit with my thoughts on this book because I was very conflicted on like a final rating, like the final, the finality, the finality whatever. On like rating this book, I was really conflicted on what I wanted to rate it. I think I'm like 75% ready to talk about this book. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I've had a difficult time with my final rating on this book. I've really been trying to think about it. I'm, st I'm still in between ratings. I will say that it is a four star or over. I don't know. You're gonna have to watch my January reading wrap up if you are that interested to see a final rating for this book, but I know it is a four star or above. I don't know if it's a four or a four and a half. It was so good. I did not expect to love this book. I really wanted to, but I was like, I probably won't like it as much as everyone else with my luck. But wow, this book was just, it was so good. It reminded me a lot of A Little Life, not for the content within it, but the feeling that it gave me upon reading it for the first time. This book is very, very character based. There's also a good storyline that's going on throughout the book, but really you're focusing on the characters, but more importantly, the inner relationships between the characters and how their relationships work with one another. And wow, this story is absolutely amazing. It is so encapsulating. It's one of those books where you feel like you know these characters person everything was so intentional there was a storyline later on into the book that caught me so off guard tears were shed and then you have a moment in the book where you realize you know the name the meaning of the book I absolutely adore the storyline and seeing how they made the video games and you can tell that the author knows like a lot about the inner workings and inner craft of 80s video games and how video games work and it's always so cool to see it like that through the author's writing like when they know a lot about something and you can tell maybe it's something that they're passionate about. I would really recommend you guys to read it. I literally was like, I want someone else that I know to read this book right now in my personal life. I want to sit down and talk about this book with somebody. Tomorrow and tomorrow, four and a half stars, on to the next book. Okay. Am anyway, I in the same exact spot from the last clip? Absolutely, but that's because it is the same day and we are starting onto another book. I've already, I think I've read like two chapters of this book so far, but the book that we are starting next is going to be The Housemaid. Now, I think that this was one of those books that one I've been seeing just a lot on my personal like bookstagram, TikTok, and people talk about recently, but also because when I asked you guys, hey, what's some of the most typed up books? I, I got so many responses about The Housemaid. We are reading The Housemaid. I have no clue what this book is about, and that's how I like to go into my thrillers. I like to know as little as possible. Let's stop it. Okay, guys, I'm on chapter 21 of... What book am I reading? 
the housemaid. The housemaid. That's what I'm reading. Okay, Dustin. I'm about 35% through the book. I forgot that that's why I love when I read on my Kindle because it shows you, like, how many minutes are left in the chapter? I'm like, what percentage you are through the book? So you always know. Random my notes. Not beneficial to this. So obviously, this is the thriller that we're reading. I think this is the most hyped up thriller right now that is going through the book sphere, as I call it. It's like the atmosphere, but for books, in case you needed further explanation. The thing is, is that what's hard for me is that I don't love thrillers anyway. I'm very picky with them. I like the the writing style I like the voice as I said the chapters short easy to get through and you're kind of always learning these little snippets or of information or not like leaving a chapter on a cliffhanger but you're leaving a chapter kind of being like okay I think my complaint and this is intentional like this isn't not supposed to be this way this is intentional in the writing but I still hate when things like are written to cause irritation because I get irritated and then I get anxious and then when I'm reading it I just start getting overly anxious not because I'm like scared but because I'm so irritated that irritation for me always causes anxiety I don't know why it just does and so I'm sitting here and I'm reading it and I'm like oh god oh this is like really making me mad but also it's slightly giving me Verity vibes like I feel like that's why it's hyped up I don't know how I'm feeling. I'm kind of conflicted about it right now. I feel like right now on a three star, but we're only 30% through the book right now. So I don't know, but that's how I'm feeling about it as of right now. Hello guys. It is a little bit later, a little bit It's a lot later. And I just finished the housemaid and Why is every book leaving me conflicted? It's leaving me pretty conflicted. I feel like with thrillers, you base it off of like plot twist ability because obviously when you're reading a thriller, you're expecting a good plot twist. I didn't see the plot twist coming because it definitely popped in my mind as a possibility. But I guess I just honestly with this book, I wasn't even thinking about like what the plot twist could be. I was like, there's definitely something weird going on here. Did I like this book? Yes. I will say that this is a good thriller. I think that it is wildly entertaining. It has super short chapters. The characters are very interesting to kind of see all the puzzle pieces go together. I liked the storyline of it. I liked how the story flowed and I did think that it was a really good thriller. So if you guys haven't read The Housemaid yet, you guys need to read it on to the next book in today's video. <laughs> I, this is the second time today that it is just me in the same spot talking. Obviously, this is directly after the last clip, but I am going to go directly into another book because, guys, we got a schedule going on. We got... We gotta get through these books. So the next book that I'm going to be reading is Carrie Soto is Back by Hayley Jenkins Reid. I am pretty sure. Let's look it up. I have my computer right here. Let's look up what award. Sometimes I'm like, do I even have good eyesight? So this actually won the Goodreads Historical Fiction Award for 2022. And also this was a book that surprisingly I got when I asked you guys what are the most hyped up books that you have seen right now. This was a book that I saw a lot throughout the responses. I personally haven't seen a lot of people talk about this book, but you know what? I'm going to trust you guys. If you guys want to know something that is challenging about this video is that I feel like everyone's algorithm is so vastly different depending on what books that you like. I know that this is the last book in the, in the universe, which it all takes place in the same universe as The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones and the Six, and Malibu Rising. I am excited to read it. I actually have had this book for quite a while. I got this book the day that it released least I uh, haven't read it so we're gonna read it for today's video I always take the sleeve off I don't like reading with the sleeve on I like reading with it just naked just feeling that feeling it with my fingers <laughs> I didn't like that. This is about Carrie Soto, and I am pretty, obviously, it's actually not about Carrie Soto. It's actually about somebody else. No, it's about Carrie Soto, and I am pretty sure it, she is like a tennis world champion or something like that, and then she retired, but then someone beat her record, so her and her dad, like, 
get her out of retirement, right? I will say going into this book, I feel like I have a little bit more of a bias than any of the other books that are even on this list because one, I have read all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books other than this one. I've read all of them. Two, I do really, really enjoy Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. So there already kind of is a little like pedestal that she's going to meet, especially since this is in the same universe as Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones and the Six and Malibu Rising, which are all books that I really enjoy, specifically Daisy Jones and the Six and Malibu Rising. I really, really loved those books. So I do have some high expectations for this. But I'm excited because this is a story that I feel like I can really get with. I really like Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing. We'll see. Let's start. Carrie Soto is back. the comeback so the first part of the book is basically like her whole entire story i'm really loving it so far and here's the thing i know absolutely nothing about tennis but even the way that i feel like it was incorporated into the story where taylor jenkins reed basically explains a very flat lay of the rules of tennis but she says it intertwined with the story where you're learning about it but it doesn't feel like she's just full-on being like this is how tennis works for those of you who don't know how tennis works it was like incorporated with the story hearing about the different matches and different things that she went through in her career and everything like that i was like wow i did not expect to love this as much as i did and i really the pacing also the pacing i felt like was perfect so happy that this video is doing this well for me as in the ratings i know why do i always have my tv on where is my remote somehow my remote synced up to that clock i i can't go into the logistics of it right now but whatever this book was ugh. guys am i about to get this am i about to give this five stars ugh. what is it what is it I've decided that this is a four and a half. I adored this book. I loved the pacing of this book. The pacing of this book was absolutely amazing. Pacing with books is something that I am extremely picky about and that actually does bump down the ratings for books quite often because the pacing of the books are just absolutely terrible. They drag things out when things don't need to be dragged out. This book did not do that. Oh my God, the, the pacing. I loved the little transcripts that you get in the middle of chapters where you get basically like sports analysis or snippets of show the ending was perfect i absolutely adored and loved this ending i adored and loved this book this book is a strong strong we're gonna say 4.75 we're gonna say 4.75 because that's just what it is i cannot believe that i put this book off for like this long which it really hasn't been this long i've had this book for like a few months i think i am so happy that i read it so on to the next book ladies and gentlemen Welcome to the next book that we're reading. Let's set up the camera. Welcome to our next read, which is Lessons in Chemistry, which is honestly a book that I don't know if I would have picked up other than for this video. This was the Goodreads Choice Award for the Goodreads debut novel. So obviously this was the author's first book and I have seen this everywhere. It was also the Barnes and Noble book of the year. And now that we have said that, <laughs> 
that's no longer needed but it also was one of the books that you guys had said that you have been seeing literally everywhere and i feel like it's also because one maybe a lot of people have had it in their 2022 wrap up and then because of that it's been talked about more oh it is starting to literally storm So no better time to read but this is not a book that I feel that I would have picked up other than for this video so I am really interested to see how I feel about this so we're reading lessons in chemistry it's also literally matching my sweatshirt so let's do this even though now we can read it time i am about this much through the book right now i have to say that i'm thoroughly enjoying it i think that it is a good book i am really enjoying the main character she's a very strong-willed just strong main character especially at the multiple multiple things that she has been thrown throughout her life that she's had to just kind of keep the ball rolling taking place in the 1960s and it shows you like everything women had to deal with back then the way that men treated women especially in the workforce especially in what is a male dominated workforce and you see how she deals with it and she's a super strong strong character and you get frustrated with her and for her and i am really liking that's i'm really liking the story for that there's a lot of different aspects i would say that i would have it at a three stars right now like i'm enjoying it but it's not like that feeling where it's like oh i love this book because i am bored at a lot of different parts sometimes i feel like the stuff is dragged on or there's just like little meaningless stuff i just realized that i kind of <laughs> look like not look like the cover but this bun that I have going on. My brain hurts. I've read so many books in the past few days to do this video. Anywho, I just finished Lessons in Chemistry. I think that I'm going to rate Lessons in Chemistry a strong three stars. The reason that it is a three is because I got really bored at some points and like some parts I was just like uninterested in. I felt like it was like really repetitive. Taking away from those, everything else about this story was great. I liked the writing style. I loved the character. I loved like every chapter is set up basically around like a certain thing like the way that this book was set up i loved the main character elizabeth she is just such a strong independent character she everything that she gets thrown at in her life she just takes it in stride also just reading about women in the 1960s and things that they had to go through and how genuinely much elizabeth paved a way for women also some of the things that come full circle at the end i would definitely recommend you guys to pick up lessons in chemistry on to the next on to the next raise <sighs> next book is a very intimidating book i think it's kind of fantasy but then again i kind of just feel like it's a literary fiction book i'm not too sure this was not a good reads award winner however i know that this book came out towards the end of 2022 and this was such a widely talked about book i know that they also wrote the poppy war and everyone's been talking about it, it takes place at oxford university which i think is one of the most pop not popular oh not popular one of the most prestigious universities in the uk i'm pretty sure so we are going to read this i am currently i think like five pages into this book right now i read the author's note that she left because oxford university is a very prestigious as i said but it's also like something that people take very very seriously so she literally left a whole entire author's note and i love how she ended it off she literally said if you find any other inconsistencies feel free to remind yourself this is a work of fiction <laughs> she slayed let's see what i think of it takes place in the 1800s so 1828 let's do it oh guys i'm doing it i am doing it unfortunately I am DNFing Babel. 
DNFing sounds very like, oh my god, I really don't like this book. I'm DNFing it because I really hate it. That is not why I'm DNFing this book right now. Honestly, this is probably going to be a part of a different video that I'm planning out that I'm going to finish this book. But just for right now, I don't know if just because of stuff that's going on that I cannot mentally even read this book right now and like really understand what's going on. I feel like this is a highly, highly, highly intellectual read and I don't think that my mind is ready for an intellectual read, especially if it's on a time frame for a video. <sighs> and that's the status on that. Let's move on to our fantasy book. Yeah, so I have decided to read The Stolen Heir by Holly Black for the fantasy book for today's video. This is a, I feel like this is one of the most hyped up fantasy books right now because it is kind of like in the same universe as the Cruel Prince series. You actually see one of the characters that's prominent in the Cruel Prince series. We shall see. chapter six. Oh, and I have to say that I'm actually liking it significantly more than I like The Cool Prince. And I don't know if this is like an unpopular opinion because I've seen a lot of people talking about this book, but I haven't. <laughs> I've like seen the hype about this book being released, I guess I should say, but I haven't seen the like thoughts and reviews on it. I don't know if people, I feel like I don't know. I feel like The Cruel Prince is just such a beloved trilogy that people like love so much that this was something that a lot of people were excited for. So I almost feel like I'm going to like this one a lot better than The Cruel Prince and people are going to be like, nothing can top The Cruel Prince. I loved Oak in The Cruel Prince and I like him in this book. Like I, it's a very different dynamic. It's a very different take on enemies to lovers. I would not say this is enemies to lovers. I am significantly enjoying this. However, I don't know. The pacing is so odd. Like it's almost like a fever dreamish thing to me, like reading this book right now. I don't know though. <sighs> I'm gonna try to finish this. It's like one o'clock in the morning right now. <laughs> uh, 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 oh. I just finished Stolen Air. The green tea Celsius's don't taste the best, but they're the only energy drink that I can drink and not feel nauseated. I just finished the Stolen Air. My thoughts are a little conflicted. I don't absolutely love the way that this book ended. And it's so hard because obviously I can tell, I think Holly Black can try to do the same thing that she with The Cruel Prince where this will probably more than likely be a trilogy about Ren and O, and I don't really love the way that this book ended. And if I'm gonna be honest, there's a lot of similarities to The Cruel Prince in this, which obviously I feel like, I feel like that's very intentional because The Cruel Prince was such a smashing success for Holly Black that like, why wouldn't you do kind of the same thing? I will say that I enjoyed the storyline of this book a hundred times better and the characters, I liked them 100 times better than I did in The Cruel Prince. And something that I liked about this book, it maybe kind of threw me off a little bit, is that the pacing was a lot quicker because since when you do read The Cruel Prince, you are already introduced to a lot of the characters and a lot of the lore and the world building. You didn't have any of the world building going into this book. I do feel that if you just picked up the stolen air you might be a little bit confused on the world and stuff because there's no world building in this book it is strictly literally just going into the story i liked because i'm not a huge fan of world building anyway in fantasy books because i have a very hard time really understanding it personally so it's not my favorite thing so i was like shoot if we're not focused on 100 pages on world building that is fine with me this was the fantasy book now we're on to our Final book for today's video. Eyes Paint of Barbarian. Oh, I hate I hate the Kindle Unlimited cover. I hate it. I was seeing 
everybody posts these like all of a sudden when i went to barnes and noble i was seeing them on the romance shelves and like i was seeing everybody post about these i still know absolutely nothing about these books like nothing and i feel like i read most of the most hyped up romances of 2022 and i thought that this one would just be a little bit of a fun thing to go into because i see everyone talking about this series and i just i feel like it's gonna be good fun do i feel like this is even really gonna be good no it's a science fiction romance Let's see what I'm getting myself into. Okay, well, I quickly found out what this is about. Literally, up until yesterday, I, Georgie Carthers, never believed in aliens. Hmm, okay. <laughs> cool, cool. Yep, cool. Mm, I'm gonna be so for real with you guys. I do not think that I can do this. I am literally 8% through this book right now. No. No. First of all, the writing. The writing and the formatting of this book, like the paragraph, Wattpad. Wattpad at its, not at its finest. Also, extremely, extremely triggering scene. Not even 5% into the book. The writing is bad, extremely triggering things. I read the trigger warning before the book and I was like, okay, I'm confused. And then right out of the bat, no ma'am, I don't think I can do this. Why are we, no, 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 I can't do it, no. We do have a change of plans. <laughs> I am not reading that book. It's kind of insane how much of that series that I've seen, like how many people are like obsessing over those books. But one, even as soon as I started reading it, I was taken back to like me being 14, reading Wattpad, like the point of view and the tone uh, and the voice of the writing. I was like, okay, whatever. I read plenty of Wattpad writing in my day and then the formatting really took me out the formatting is exactly like when you're reading a book off Wattpad and I was like I can get over it a suit no nope the graphic descriptions of no 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 nope I went back to the drawing board because I was like we need a romance one we can't just sit here and not do a romance unfortunately since I am a very influenced person I have read basically every single hyped up book right now because people were like Icebreaker, Akatar, Magnolia Park, If He Had Been With Me, The Twisted Series, Finding 13, Keeping 13, The Love Hypothesis. I have read all of these romance books and then I saw a few people say, Say You Swear. They said Say You Swear. Say You Swear is a book. And I have actually seen this a lot on Bookstagram, on Book Talk, on BookTube. And I think this book is not, like, this book is not new. We're going to read Say You Swear and probably have a better time. Aww. I just finished Say You Swear. It is 4.44. Angel numbers. Uh, okay, I'm so giggly. <laughs> so good, so good, so good. It was so good. One of my new favorite book boyfriends was just birthed from this book. I have to buy the physical copy, like, oh my God. <laughs> this book was a solid, five stars not joking five i loved the friend group aspect this book it was just so good oh my god the guy in this book to die for now i will say that i was debating on dropping it down to a four and a half because towards the end of the book they pulled a trope that i absolutely hate i hate in books but it did spice up the story. I was like, wait, I'm very annoyed, but at the same time, like, this is so good. Like, I'm really eating this up. Like, I was literally like, I was eating it up. It's literally almost five o'clock in the morning. And I, oh wow. Oh wow. It was so good. Opening up Amazon to go order it. <laughs> but for real. Hi everybody, welcome back to me sitting in this chair sick because that's currently what's going down. Yay, love that for me. But that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff you guys know how to do. This is my first YouTube video since hitting 100K, and I just wanted to say 
thank you guys so much again from the bottom to the top of my heart you guys mean the absolute world to me you guys are a huge reason that i even get out of this bed in the morning you guys are people that i live for and i appreciate all of you and i love all of you so much and i can't wait to see where we all go this year so stick along if you want i love all of you so much and i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i will see you guys when i see you peace